We're back with Gabrielle Union. Now we need to talk about your new, impactful, incredibly powerful show, Truth Be Told, that's on Apple TV+. Plus. It's about truth. How do we face the truth? You've been truthful about things that have happened in your life that happen in this show. How do we be brave enough to not shy away from these subjects and face them because they are happening and they are real? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's just what you just said. It's, it's being honest, it's being clear, um, and it's having the courage of conviction to stand in your truth. And as audience members and as people who have to receive this information, perhaps don't make people complicit in their own abuse. Perhaps when people tell you what's happening to them, believe them the first time. Perhaps have more compassion <laughs> and understanding. And then provide people the resources and the time needed for healing and, and to address those issues. So when we talk about on Truth Be Told season three, the issue of sexual trafficking of black and brown girls yes. and the disparate treatment that, um, that happens yep. in terms for of awareness, um, media resources. attention, resources, law enforcement response. So here's some stark uh, statistics. Last year, 71,000 children 17 and under of black girls went missing last year. 71,000. That's shocking. That's, 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 I mean, it's criminal, obviously. But how many of their names have you heard? And nine out of 10 of those were immediately labeled as runaways. When you're labeled a runaway, that means there's a delayed response. There's no, there's no Amber Alert. There's a delayed response by law enforcement and the investigation is delayed. And if you watch crime shows, you know that the first, you know, what, 48 hours, 72 hours are, are critical yeah. in recovery. So what can we do about that? Because the show is so beautifully, elegantly elevated and it, it does face all this and discuss it. But, you know, well, we have a clip here. I want to show everybody. I'm, I'm crazy for this show. It's just so powerful. And you knew she was loved. Remember that. You did everything you could for your daughter. She can't say the same about you. If you had paid attention to Drea instead of Blondie last year, maybe we wouldn't be here. And what did you do for Drea? Yeah, it's easy to talk, but not so easy to act now, is it? We all got a story about how we could have done more, but failure to act, that's still failure. You are so powerful in this show. Is it true that this show felt different for you and compelled? I, I'm, I'm not a good crier at all. That's just, I'm not, my, I'm not generally that close to my emotions, my negative emotions, if you will. This show, not only was I crying all day on set, I would go home and cry. And I'm, again, like my husband was kind of shocked because he's never seen me that, like crumbling like that every, every night for five months. Um, but it wasn't hard to cry. I mean, partly because I, you know, as a, at 19, I was raped at gunpoint at my after school job. Um, and I, even though I was raped at gunpoint by a stranger at work, I was still asked what I had on. And when you realize that folks will make you complicit in your own abuse and trauma, no matter the circumstances, and that will, people will legitimately care less about your life if um, you have too much melanin. That's, that makes it easy to cry, you know? Um, and when I think about, I was raped one time 30 years ago, and I am still in therapy. I've been once a week for 30 years. I still crumble. I still am, like PTSD is so, it's, so, it, it's right here. It's right at my fingertips. So no, it's not hard to cry, but when I think about, it happened one time. And what these folks are experiencing with human trafficking, sexual trafficking, my, my trauma, my horror, the worst experience of my life is happening multiple times a day, every day, indefinitely, until they decide you have no more value. And, and part of the challenge is like, what can we do? We can make sure we have enough tears for all of our girls, all of our boys that we raise our voices in our communities when anyone goes missing. So we, 
we have the same resources, the same response, the same care, the, the same concern, we can stop demonizing black and brown girls, black and brown children. We can, we can be really cognizant about how we use words. So when you see a headline like, juvenile prostitutes, you can call into your no newspaper or, or media outlets and say, juveniles mean children and children cannot consent to sex work. Children are victims. Yes. We can demand better. Yes. You know? <laughs> Bringing it a little closer to home, here in New York, last month, a 12-year-old autistic girl was lured away through Instagram by a man. Her mother figured that out. And she was recovered in the Bronx. 12 years old, through Instagram. How often are we policing our children's social media? Do we even know where to look? Do we even know all of the new, you know, ways of, of communicating? Yeah. I know I don't, but it's a constant, it's another job. And that's the point of the scene in that show, that in the show, in the episode, it's so powerful because a parent says, my kid wouldn't do that, and you show them in the snap of them a finger. Them too, yes. our kids too. I mean, the fact that I've always loved you for your honesty and your candor and your strength. But today, and watching the show, truth be told, I want to thank you with every fiber of my being and my entire heart and humanity for shining a light on these important subjects and facing these things and giving recommendations and guidance and understanding and, as you said, a voice to this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> It is really impactful. Well, I think it needs no further explanation. Everybody check out the extraordinary show on Apple TV Plus, Truth Be Told, in its third season with the incredible Gabrielle Union and the wonderful Octavia Spencer. We'll be right back.